All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Algebra 1, Chapter 7, Review. Come on, come on, come on. All right, number one. So, remember, one of the things I tell you to do every time is just write it out. Write it out, okay? You know what an exponent means. You know what uh, 2x to the fourth means 2 times x times x times x times x times y. So write that out. Then we've still got to the third power. That means these parentheses three times. Then you can go through and see, okay, we've got 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And then times 3 is 24 times 3 is 72. And then we have four factors here, four there, four there. And that gives us x to the 12th power. And then 1, 2, 3, and 3, and 3 gives us y to the 9th power. There we go. You could also multiply in up here. That's 2 to the 3rd power. 4 times 3 is 12. And then 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 and the 6 gives me the 9. All right. On these, I want you to remember the numbers in front, the coefficients, treat them as their own fraction. Okay, simplify that. 9 goes into both 18 and 9. 18 divided by 9 gives me 2 and 1. So I'm going to have negative 2 here. Negative exponent means division, so we put it on the other side of the fraction. That gives me c to the third times c to the fifth. And then this moves up. That gives me d times d to the fourth. And we have negative 2, d to the fifth, over c to the eighth. All right. If we write this out, again, treat the coefficients as their own fraction. We can simplify this. If we divide by negative 7, or you can say negative divided by a negative, gives me a positive. 7 goes into both of these, gives me 1 here and 4 there. All right, so I'm going to have 1 and 4. Then I'm going to start canceling out the variables x and x, x and x, a y and a y. And I turned this z to the 0 power into a 1. Okay, so then we have y times 1 left on the bottom. y times 1 is just y. And then on top we have x to the third power z. So my answer is x to the third power z over 4y. Okay, we'll look at it differently. We'll do the other method here. You can write this out again. Okay, d times d and then write out three times. But we'll look at the other method here. This is kind of like the distributive property, not the distributive property. Okay, so we'll take the 3 and we'll multiply each of the exponents by 3. Now, I wrote 2 to the first power because when there isn't an exponent, technically there's 1. So I took the 3 here, took the 3 there, and here. So then we have 2 to the third power, c to the third power, d, 2 times 3 to the sixth power. Okay, then we still have this exponent, 2. Now we'll take that and multiply each of these by 2. So doing the not the distributive property, 2 to the 6th power times c to the 6th power times d to the 12th power. 2 to the 6th power, or 2 to the 3rd power is 8, squared gives me 64 c to the 6th, d to the 12th. All right, please pay attention whether we are adding or multiplying. Okay, when we're adding, we don't need the box method. When we're adding polynomials, we don't even need the parentheses, so we just drop them. That's what I did in the first line here, just got rid of the parentheses. Okay, and now we're going to combine like terms. 3x 
and 8x. And then negative 7y, positive 5y, gives me 11x minus 2y plus 2. Again, drop the parentheses, write out the expression, find the like terms, and then order them with the greatest degree. So this is 1 and 1, so this is a degree of 2 as has this, but this would come first alphabetically. All right, here we go. We have a little bit of distributive property here before we can subtract, okay? So we need to distribute the negative three to everything inside these parentheses and the negative two to everything inside the second set of parentheses, okay? That gives me this for the first set, okay? And then for the second set of parentheses, negative 2. Now notice I didn't write minus negative 4. I'm using that negative here, so it's just negative 4. Okay, and then combine like terms. So we put the squares together, that gives me negative 10x squared. The x minus 6, 12x minus 6x, 6x, 18 plus 220. All right, same deal here. Notice... We have distributive property for the negative 2d. On the other side here, we have a negative. When you're subtracting, you change all the signs inside the parentheses because it's like having a negative 1 there. So negative 1 times 3d is negative 3d squared. Okay, that simplifies to this once you put all the like terms together. Oh, wait a minute. Is that correct? That is not correct. Okay, right here. This should be 3d squared. That's not correct. We'll just rearrange this. Negative 8d to the third plus, th no, minus, this comes next, minus 3d squared plus 18d plus Eight. Okay, because that's only squared. I can't combine that with the third power cubed. All right, here, this is where we start using our box method. All right, we're multiplying. So I'm going to write it downwards. 8x times 8x gives me 64x squared. 8x times 3 is 24x negative 3 times 8x is negative 24x, and negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Now the first one doesn't have a like term, so we're just going to write that 64x squared. These two are like terms, the x and the x. 24 minus 24 cancels out, and so we're left with 9. That's my final answer. All right, here, box method. All right, line it up. Multiply each row. Remember the first and last term don't have any like terms, so we can just write those out. And then diagonally we have the like terms that we're going to combine. Okay, there is your simplified polynomial. Okay, here, distributive property. 6m squared times 3m squared. Remember that's 6 times m times m times 3 times m times m. So when you're multiplying the variables, that's when the exponents change. So now you have 6m to the 4th, then minus 12m to the 3rd, minus 24m. Can't simplify that any further because there are no like terms. All right, box method again. Line them up, combine like terms, and we have negative 28 y squared minus 59y plus 9. Okay, remember, this square means that you just multiply this by itself. Once you see that, you know we can use the box method. Just like that, line it up, combine like terms, and you get 16 x squared plus 9. Okay, start with distributive property here, and then just combine like term. So then subtract the y squared, 
cancel those out. Then we have 6y here. We're going to move the y to the other side. Leaves us with 9y equals negative, negative 9y equals negative 36. Divide that by 9 and you get y is equal to 4. Distributive property here gives us negative 18n plus 12 is equal to negative 12 plus 8n. We're going to move the 18n to the other side. n plus 18n. And then we're going to move the 12 to the other side. Plus 12. And that gives us 24 is equal to 10n. Divide by 10 on each side. And n is 2.4. Okay, here's a tricky one. The length of the garden is 5 feet longer than its width. So the width is x, the length is x plus 5. The garden is surrounded by a 2 foot wide sidewalk. Okay, the sidewalk has an area of 76 square feet. Find the dimensions of the garden. Okay, so first off, the side is 2 plus x plus 2, and this side is 2 plus x plus 5 plus 2. Okay, and we can combine that. The general concept here is that we have to take the entire area minus the garden area, and that gives us leaves us with a sidewalk. Okay, so that is 76. So that's where we're going to start. The side lengths here were x plus 4 on one side and x plus 9 on the long side. When we multiply those, we get x squared plus 13x plus 36. Here we had x times x plus 5, that's x squared plus 5x. Now we subtract those. x squared minus x squared gives us no x squared. 13 minus 5x gives us 8x. Plus 36 is equal to 76. Subtract 36 from each side. 8x is equal to 40 x is equal to 5. Now the dimensions are 5 by 5 plus x, 5 by 10. Those are the dimensions of the garden. This is not the final answer. The dimensions are 5 by 10. All right. Um, similar problem here. The side is decreased by 9, so x minus 9. Set up your box. Solve that. These cancel out. You're left with x squared plus 81. Okay. Uh, here we have 8 m factors. All right. When you write this out, you can see what you get there. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. That's going to be 8 right here. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 and then this is going to be positive so we're going to have positive 64 so we have negative 2 times negative 2 negative times a negative is positive times a negative is negative times a negative is positive so your answer is going to be positive so it can't be this can't be that and 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32 times 2 is 64 so it's got to be this one you can count the variables if you want to verify all right, number 20. I've rewritten it to make sure that you're simplifying the coefficients as their own fraction. You can divide these each by 2. You get 3 and 1 here. And then switch these around. 3 to the top. Move that up to the top. And then you get y to the 4th here. 3, so it's not going to be one of these. And it's y to the 4th. There you go. Number 21, here it is, the box method, simplify. Notice 6 minus 4 is 2x, so it is j. And simplify this. We can multiply these in and get this expression. Now these are going to cancel out. You get 9. This moves up, which gives you n to the 12th is 24. So 9n to the 24th. In scientific notation, the decimal goes there. There are seven places after that, so it is to the seventh. And then here, 
Remember, if you multiply this, that's not in scientific notation. You have to 